What is going on Adventure Nation? When we last left you, you guys were at the Arctic Circle with us and in this episode we're going to pick up where we left off and we're going to take you from the Arctic Circle up to Inuvik. This is the Motorhome Experiment. Good morning everybody. Ooh, a little bit bright there. That's better. <laughs> Lori getting her mosquito spray on. That is awesome. There's mosquitoes everywhere. The Arctic Circle, folks. We actually woke up at the Arctic Circle. We can pretty say cool. now we have slept at the Arctic Circle. Yeah, which is really pretty crazy. We're going to continue up the road today to Taktayoktuk. What's amazing is that we have this little community that's forming. We call it the Tuck Club. That's them there, they go. That's Andy and Karen. Andy, Karen, and Anson, their son. And they're on their way up to Tuck, and we've met some other folks that are uh, on our way up to Tuck. And then there's kind of like a halfway Tuck club where they come up to Eagle Plains, which is just south of here. So just been really kind of cool. There is enough traffic that you feel comfortable, like if something happens that somebody's going to find you oh definitely there's so many trucks truck campers that seems to be the thing to do here a lot of just uh, vehicles just tourists just taking their suvs and cars into uh, i'm assuming Inuvik because i have not seen them right now we've seen a couple more class a's which is a little bit more yeah, so we're not the uh, only encouraging crazies. yeah we're not the only crazy ones we have seen probably what five yeah so far yeah About a that. ton of truck campers but anyways today we continue our trek north we're going to cross a couple of ferries we may have to unhook the car we don't know and we are also going to try to get all the way up to the arctic ocean well we're trying to get to talk to Yuktuk, but we don't know if that's going to happen everything yeah. depends on how the road is and how fast we get to in a big yeah we've been told that the road can be muddy and nasty so it's gonna depend on that and how fast we can travel but are you ready to roll I'm ready let's do this just in case you were wondering here's a little bit of information on the Arctic Circle pause it and read it it's pretty interesting stuff we are rolling out of the Arctic Circle 10.45, nice bright and early start for us. That's awesome. But what we found on this road is that's kind of been an advantage because then there hasn't been as much traffic on the road. And by the time we get up to where the ferries are, we're hoping that everybody else has already crossed. <laughs> or the line will be three hours long and we'll have that's to wait. wait and grab lunch. But there's so not far- much traffic here though, so I don't think there's gonna be a line. No, not that much traffic, no. But so, so far it has been an incredible journey. We pulled over here on the side of the road. We wanna go out and check out the tundra. We were told by the lady at the visitor center there, at the interpretive center, that it was really kinda of neat and we should check it out. So we are. Oh yeah. Well it's spongy? It is spongy, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. She said that it will feel spongy, but if you actually dig in, like not that far down, just a few inches, that you will see the permafrost. Not that you'll see it, I think that you have to, you'll feel it. You'll feel it. But here you can really see how spongy it is. That is crazy. All right, we went and got a little shovel. We're gonna see if we can dig into the tundra here and get to the permafrost and check it out. Yeah, she said it was not, she says not that far not down. Not that far down. She said it's very easy to see it. Oh yeah. That's rock hard right there. So let me Once you get through the open that up layer. a little bit. Yeah. Okay, just wanna say we're doing this with the permission of the actual territorial enterprise <laughs> center. But this isn't hurting anything out here. So, so it's just gonna look like there's probably. I'm kind of a wussy and sticking my hand into a hole like this is like always one of those weird things to me, but. Nothing can live here that cold. It's freezing literally down there. That is crazy. It feels like. It's ice. It feels like a, an ice cube under there, like a giant ice cube. It is, it is amazing. You're gonna have to do it. Well, of course. All right, Stick Lauren. my hand. Stick your hand into the dark damp hole 
and feel the permafrost. The sleep, the sleep, man, the sleep. Oh wow, yeah, it's ice down there. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's just rock hard and it's ice. Yeah, you can't. A after the mud, you I can't say, see it down in there at all. Let's uh, here watch. How cool is that? It's very cool, like the things that you learn, right? Right. See, and that's why you stop at the visitor centers when you come into a place like this, because they will tell you what to look for. We have never done this. No. Well, did you have fun playing in the dirt? Yes, like a little girl. And yeah. jumping. Jumping on the sponge seat from across. That was really, really cool. Wait. You know what they say, Lori. What they say? Every now and then you gotta stop and pull back the tundra and touch the permafrost. Yeah, it's a common saying everywhere. Every, everybody knows that saying. No, but I'm very, very glad that we did it. I mean, it's just one of those unique experiences because where well, you have permafrost anywhere else? Unless you go to very cold places all the time. And, and again, you know, growing up in Canada, I don't know about anywhere else, we learned about tundra and we learned about permafrost and all that kind of stuff, but in a classroom, you don't get to touch it. And that was just mind blowing right now. Again, you know me, small things amuse me, but. No, it's a good thing. The small things would make us happy, right? Like this kind of stuff. Very, very cool stuff. So let's continue onward. Yep. Okay, Lorena, we are here at the Northwest Territories, just getting ready to cross over. I we, know you can hear us first of all. We are on Wrights Pass and it is crazy windy up here. <laughs> so we're gonna head back into the RV. This is called the Gwich'in Settlement area and... We're leaving the Yukon at this point. Basically. We are leaving the Yukon, so let's go leave the Yukon. <laughs> I need to take my selfie though. Oh, you gotta take your here. selfie, all right. We gotta take a selfie. Woo! That was a little wind blowing there, Lori. It was, I mean, it was literally pushing us out, like. Wow. It was crazy. This is new territory for all of us, including Freya here, and it is amazing. You've done good so far, girl. So let's keep it up. And let's continue. This valley, the view into the valley is insane. It's still chilly up here. There's snow all around. Like you can just get out and just touch it and come through. Bring you guys up to date on a few things that we've got going on here. We're about 270 kilometers from Inuvik. So that's not the end of the road yet. Inuvik is just kind of the stepping off point. It used to be the end of the road, but now you can go up to Taktoyoktuk, where we're gonna go. So we're crossing the Continental Divide, which the Dempster Highway does like, what, three times? Three times, yeah. So again, now, rivers on one side flow up to the yeah. Arctic Ocean, and rivers on the other side flow yeah. into the Bering Sea. We also are in the Richardson Mountains, which are the northernmost extension of the North American Rocky Mountains. So, really, really cool stuff, and it is absolutely gorgeous. And here we are approaching our first ferry crossing. And we were wondering how big the line is gonna be. And we are first in line by the looks of it. 
so pretty crazy. And they say stop here until he signals. He has signaled. So here we go. This is the big dip that everyone talks about. So we'll see what happens. Down this side. We no problem. We tracked it the whole way, isn't it? No, I don't, I don't think so. I think we did pretty good. And that is pretty crazy. We spun a little bit in the mud as we were getting on because the back end dragged a little bit, but you don't want to slow down too much there. I slowed down too much. All right, we are moving on the river already. This is a drive on, drive off ferry. Let's see if you can see out here. What do you think, Lori? Everybody oh, this filming. It's amazing. I think this is like one of two ferries, and they're free, by the way. Actually, there is a, I don't know if you can see, there's a cable down there. So they're pulled across by cable. So that's kind of cool. So the whole process is pretty fast and that's why there's not a not a big lineup. Yeah. Yo, literally, they load us in quick and let's go. Boom. <laughs> it's like two and done. Yes. I'm gonna kind of angle out here. The first one. That was awesome. Pretty muddy and a little bit crazy getting on and off. We drug and he said we filled everything back up with mud in the back, but so what? No, 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 no. He said it's all up underneath our rig, so oh. yeah, it's not a big deal. We'll let the truck camper get past us here and then we'll continue our trek. It's not that far to the next river crossing, so we'll see. <laughs> Pretty cool though. But this is the Peel River crossing. That was the Peel River crossing? Yes. All right. So again, don't be afraid to come up here. That's, that's one ferry so far. Class A towing a car on a tow dolly and we were able to get on the ferry. So, so far, so good. We'll let you guys know how the rest of it goes. And if it's a disaster, then we'll let you know that too. All right, some updates on the road. Obviously, we're coming up to the Mackenzie Ferry Crossing. There is an 18 wheeler on the ferry. There is an 18-wheeler on the ferry, and there's one in front of us that's going to be on the ferry in a minute, so that's kind of kind of cool. The Peel River crossing, after we came out of Peel River, the road was extremely soupy, and it felt like I was riding on ice, so it was pretty crazy. But the rest of the road, pretty good dirt road. Some washboarding in spots, but hey, it's, it is a dirt road. The other thing that we have discovered, or actually we been knowing now for quite a while. One of the main disadvantages of a class A or a class C or anything where you're riding inside of your home is that you can hear freaking everything like plates rattling, stuff rattling, things falling down. You hear it all and yet you see these folks with their trailer and or truck camper just blasting down the road having a good old time because they can't hear any of it. So yep. It makes us more conscious of like going slower because we know everything is moving. Yeah, yeah. it's very, very nerve wracking. It's not nerve wracking, it's just annoying. It's annoying, let's say that, yes. All right, looks like we're gonna be a while before that thing gets back. So uh, we'll just hang out. And here's the ferry back from the other side, getting ready to pick us up. I'm wondering how many of us can get on there. It'll be interesting to see if we get on with this tanker or not. Alrighty, here we go. Uh, Huge truck before us. This is gonna be interesting to say the least. Hopefully he packs it all down and makes it nice for us. <laughs> oh, this is that crazy. That's true, you know what? That's true. Yeah. So it might be a good thing. It might be a good thing that he levels everything out. I don't know. Oh yeah, that's it. One and done. All right, well, we're gonna be next up. All right, the ferry is back to get us. Yes. And this should be interesting. 
They're getting us to hold here for just a second. I think he's gonna fix some shit. <laughs> he's trying to stamp on the blue piece. These guys know their stuff, so they're trying to get it as level as they can for us, which is pretty cool. How you doing, boss? Down, down to the left side, please. You got it. This is a larger one for sure. <laughs> That's fun. This is a larger ferry. They don't have bathrooms. How you doing, boss? Lots of room. We're gonna have a nice view. Yeah, the view is gonna be spectacular. YOLO, folks, you only live once. You gotta do this stuff, man. Yeah, I'm freaked out when I'm pulling onto a ferry like this that I've never been on before, but it's fun as hell. You don't think they got us packed in like sardines? Check that out. That is the Class C that's next to us. Uh, that's awesome. They've got us underway. You can hear those big old diesels roaring. see in front of us the current is so strong they'll get out to a certain spot and it kicks the whole ferry over to the left a little bit actually they do a rotation because right now he's backing up so he'll rotate and then drive forward to the other side and then rotate back again to dock us so pretty cool procedure As we turn, you can see the little community of Tesjegetchik, which is as close as I'm gonna get to that name. I'll put it up on the screen so you guys can see it. There are guys out walking around, so I guess you can get out and walk around on the crossing. The crossing's maybe five or 10 minutes. Lorena said that there is restrooms and stuff on board, so that's kind of cool, just in case you have a really weak bladder and can't hold it for 10 minutes. Of course, you might have been holding it the whole way down the road and the ferry was the last stand. All the water rushing around the ferry. When you gotta go, you gotta go. So the guys just come up and explain to us what's going on. We'll be first off the ferry and then uh, we'll see what happens after that. And we're making the swing around as he drives up against the current, swings around and then backs in like a pro. You guys are the bomb. Thank you, sir. We'll see you in a few days. You got it. You got it. Spend lots of money. Don't be shy. That was fun. They had to throw some blocks on as we come out, but those guys know what they're doing and uh, yeah, away we go. It's amazing, all the cars on the other side, way yeah. the pros are actually cheering and giving us a thumbs up and everything. That was awesome, yeah. People are, people are like going, finally, the moron in the class A pulling a car to talk. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> That is awesome. Well, definitely something wrong with us, but we're here. That is cool. Let's let all these folks go by. Oh, that's awesome! <laughs> I don't even know what happened. We got stuck, or it was a well. The, they didn't want to. They don't want to. Like I could have just dragged the hitch across the the gate of the do of the uh, barge, yeah. but they don't want to do that. So they just want us to come off level instead of coming off and dropping and going. You know how you normally hear it when we drive out of a driveway and it scrapes the, the road? Yeah, they didn't want that on their barge, so. Woohoo! We did it! We did it! The next stop, the Arctic Ocean. Holy smokes. Well, no, first in Well, yeah, first in and then the Arctic Ocean. That, that road from the 85 kilometers 
from Inivik to Tuk to Yuktuk is going to be a rough one. That's what we've heard, but we heard this road was hideous, and the road really wasn't that bad, so we'll see. Well, no, this one was make street music. No, well, yeah, we heard from the motorcyclists that it wasn't that bad. The park rangers said, oh, the road is shit. It really isn't that bad for a dirt road. So, as you can see, as you can see. All right, let us continue. Now I'm all hot from my adrenaline. Adrenaline. <laughs> we are almost to Inuvik, which means this is the first time we've seen paved road in 450 miles. But I guess we're not supposed to get used to it. It's only for five or six miles, and then we're back to dirt. And there's some rough patches. And yeah, the problem with the paved roads up here is the fact that there's some just nasty spots that you don't expect on a paved road, and it kind of rattles your teeth a little bit. So we're just gonna take our time on the paved road here and check out Inuvik and probably gonna stay here tonight before we head on into Tuktoyuktuk. It's 7.45 now, that'll allow us to get a little bit of work done. All right, Lorena, we have made it to Inuvik. We are in Inuvik. I mean, it's so surreal because in the map, it looks like a little dot way up there, but we're here. We literally took a thousand mile dirt road detour off of the the main highway to come up the Dempster, but I think it's gonna be worth it. We still got an extra day up here. Probably gonna be an extra two or three days up here, but we've got one more day because we're still not at the end of the road. We're gonna yes. do that now, but come on back here and show them your car. Oh my God. You can well, see the, can I watch you know, the uh, bit, dirt on the RV is just insane. We're taking this as a badge of honor but kind of thing. Check and this out. This. But, if you see, it's a natural protection for the car, for all the rocks, like actual rocks. <laughs> Your car is just trashed. Here's one up in the windshield. The bike cover is a really good thing, Lori. <laughs> yes, looking bad. Oh, the bikes would have just been trashed. It's yeah. just everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. So even look at this one. Like, how does this get here? Like the stone up there. I don't get it. Oh, look so. at this. Dirt washes off and mud washes off. So there's gonna be a car It'll wash here. All we're not washing your car until we get back to Dawson City. Well, there's no reason, no point of it, I guess. There isn't really a point to it. So <laughs> let's go inside and plan for tomorrow and I've got to get some work done. Okay, let me go and get my cat. All right, so I've got to talk to you guys about something. I was just checking the sunrise sunset charts for Inuvik because I was in there doing some work and Lori said, you realize it's midnight, right? And I was like, well, no still light out and as you guys know we've been traveling and complaining about the light being late at night we didn't realize that once we got here to Inuvik how bad that would be so I was checking the daylight now it's kind of it's overcast right now but I was checking the sunrise sunset charts today is July 7th the next sunset is July 20th at 2 30 a.m. so the sun isn't gonna set like I said you can't really see it right now because it is pretty overcast it's been overcast all day long but I thought that was pretty amazing so on July 20th the Sun will set at 2 30 a.m. and it will rise again at like 3 30 3 40 a.m. something like that but that's in like 13 days so pretty crazy damn this RV is dirty and there's bugs are waiting to get in here we go to go then what? It's kind of dark in here because we've got all the curtains and stuff shut so you guys can see that it gets pretty dark in here. Our RV is pretty good at, at blocking out the light. And then this is the back bedroom. You can see, you know, can't see back there at all. It's dark. So 
not too bad at all but it's after midnight time to go to sleep catch you guys in the morning we really hope you enjoyed the trip from the Arctic Circle up to Inuvik, but this is where we're gonna end this one, and we'll pick up the rest of the journey in the next episode. But if this is your first time here, it would be awesome if you hung out with us a little bit and got to know us, which means you've gotta hit that subscribe button. Uh, make sure you click on the little notifications bell so that you can get notifications whenever we post a new video. And it would be really cool if you liked the video. We'll see you next time on the Motorhome Experiment.